Right now you're looking at footage from the Runcam Phoenix HD, which is the very first officially authorized camera made by Runcam for the DJI FPV system. But wait, I can hear you thinking, what about the Runcam MIPI and the Runcam Racer before that? Yes, those were compatible with the DJI system, but they were not officially authorized. Runcam just did it because they could and Cadex was pissed. And finally DJI went, okay kids, stop fighting. We love you both. And now Runcam is officially officially in the fold. So in this video, we're gonna compare the Runcam Link with the Cadex Polar and a few other DJI cameras that you could get and try and help you decide which is the best. And the answer is the best is the Cadex Vista or the Nebula Pro, but it doesn't matter because you can't get them, but we're gonna look at them anyway and see just how close this camera comes. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The Runcam link that I'm reviewing in this video was sent to me by Runcam for this video. I did not receive any other cash or other compensation in exchange for this video, and no one has had any control or restrictions on the content of this video before it was released. Runcam link. Cadex Polar Vista. Cadex, Cadex Vista. Check this out. <clears throat> you notice anything similar? The video transmitter is identical in all of them. And that's the first thing I want to get out of the way as the stable of companies who make, make DJI peripherals expands. The video transmitters are all made by DJI. The Cadex Vista, the Cadex Air Unit Lite, all of them are made by DJI. Now I say that as a fact and I don't know that for sure as a fact, so grain of salt. But if you just look at them, it's clear they're all made in the same factory. If you take it apart to make a naked Vista, it's even more clear when you look at the circuit boards. No offense that Cadex and Runcam did not manufacture these. Take a Cadex Loris or a Runcam Hybrid and look at the circuit board, look at the way it's manufactured and designed, and then take a look at this and ask me whether you think Cadex Runcam or DJI manufactured it. The video transmitters come from DJI, and that means that when Runcam releases the Runcam Link or Cadex releases the Cadex Vista, it's all the same thing, okay? And that's good because, well, number one, the design of these things is freaking amazing. They're so durable, they're practically indestructible, they work really well, they have all that proprietary DJI silicon in them, which is probably why DJI doesn't let anybody else manufacture them. That's good. So what is Runcam bringing to the table here? The answer is the camera. And we know that Cadex and Runcam can make very good cameras. And you might say, oh yeah, well they make analog cameras, but not digital ones, and that's not true. The Runcam Hybrid and the Cadex Loris are 4K digital recording. What DJI is doing with their cameras is actually not as interesting and impressive and difficult as what they're doing with their video transmitters, which is very interesting, impressive, and difficult. So Cadex and Runcam make a camera, they make a, an antenna, and then they package it with the DJI Air Unit or the, we've been calling it the Cadex Vista, but the proper name for this little one is the Air Unit Lite. And I guess we're gonna have to start calling that because now Runcam is selling it too. And that means that all of this equipment is completely interchangeable. Here we've got an original Cadex Vista, here we've got a Nebula Pro, and here we've got the Runcam Link with the Runcam Link camera. If you've got a video transmitter and you wanna swap cameras for some reason, like because you broke your camera and you need a replacement, you can put any of the DJI cameras on any of the DJI Cadex Runcam DJI VTXs and they will all work as expected. Now we're going to go out and do a flight test of this camera in just a minute and you'll be able to see the image quality. But before we do that, there is going to be something about this camera that's a deal breaker for some people. And if that's you, then I hope you leave this video playing in the background so you don't kill my analytics by clicking away, but that's up to you. This is a 60 FPS camera. DJI cameras come in 60 FPS and 120 FPS. And in case you're thinking, oh, it's not like I'm a gamer, what do I care about high frame rate? DJI's transmission system 
has more inherent latency than something like analog and shark bite. And one of the ways that DJI makes up that latency is by having a higher frame rate, lower latency camera. With a 120 FPS camera like the Nebula Pro or the Cadex Vista or the original DJI Air Unit camera, you get a latency of about 25 milliseconds, maybe a little more as you get further away. With a 60 FPS camera, your latency is around 35 milliseconds and maybe a little more, maybe 45 milliseconds or, more, or even maybe more as you get further further away. And although that difference is just 10 milliseconds, it does make a difference to some pilots. So this is a 60 FPS camera. And in addition to the latency implications, it also means you are not going to be able to switch between 16.9 and 4.3 mode. You'll be stuck in 16.9 and you will not be able to do the image adjustments on the camera like change exposure, saturation, and so forth like you can with the original camera. If that is okay with you, and let's face it, these days, if you want to fly DJI, you kind of have to just accept that because you just can't get the original, you can't get the 120 FPS cameras because there's a chip shortage. That's the reason. They can't get enough of the 120 FPS sensors to make the cameras. And when they do get them, they put them in the freaking air unit instead of in the air unit light. If you're, if you're accepting a 60 FPS camera, let's go outside and fly it and see how it looks. And we're going to start with just a little bit of sample footage from each of the four cameras that I've decided to compare in this roundup. Here's the Runcam Phoenix HD. I'm just going to shut up and let you watch it for a minute. And here is the Cadex Polar, which is probably the biggest competitor to the Phoenix HD today. Next, we've got the Cadex Vista, or uh, is the Vista the VTX? Is the Vista the camera? I, it's the original DJI, literally the original DJI camera that came with the DJI Air unit and the Cadex Vista. And although you can't get this camera anymore, it's literally not being made, the Nebula Pro is very, very close to it in terms of image quality and performance. I just don't happen to have a Nebula Pro for whatever reason, so I put the Vista in instead. And finally, we've got the Nebula Nano, which I threw in because it is much smaller and lighter than the other cameras here. And the image quality is, well, anyway, I just thought you might like to see what you're giving up when you go with that smaller, lighter camera and why no one is excited to see the Nebula Nano in any of their bind and flies. In this segment, you can look at the detail in the needles in the trees to see how much detail the camera is resolving. Uh, you could also look at the shadows and see how much detail is in the shadows, how dark the shadows are versus how much uh, dynamic range the camera has. Finally, you can just look at the overall quality of the colors. Unfortunately, the sunlight was not in the exact same place for each of these because the sun moves in the sky, but what could you do? In this segment, I wanted to test the camera's exposure algorithm uh, as I flew from the bright sunlight into the dark area behind the barn and then back out again. You can see how far away from the dark area the camera is when it opens up the exposure and how it handles the bright sun as it comes out of the dark area into the light. Finally, here is some proximity flying through some branches. Uh, I think this is a kind of flight where DJI really excels because you can just see all of this scraggle and leaves in a way that is much more difficult with analog. Uh, I fly basically the same path for all four of these cameras and you can see what you think.
interesting. Look at the, yeah, look at, does the color look kind of blotchy? It looks kind of, my skin tones look kind of blotchy. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, like look right here. Okay, I get it. That's also where I'm losing my hair, but wow. Yeah, look at the difference. It's not blotchy at all. Uh, maybe it's because I'm not, like, not in the sunshine. Let's go over here in the sunshine, who knows? No, wow. What a difference in the colors, yeah. Wow, even the resolution seems higher, jeez. I thought of a way to give you a more objective comparison of the camera's image quality. This is a color checker card. Uh, it's used for color correction and uh, these are temperature controlled photographic or video lights. So I'm gonna take each of the cameras and point them at this card under these lights, exactly controlled lighting conditions. And in addition to that, I'm gonna set the camera right on this line, perfectly centered up, perfectly flat, so you can also get a sense of the, of the field of view of the different cameras. So here's the Runcam link. I'll give you a second to look at that. And of course you can pause the video if you want to. And we'll just do a little close up of the color checker card so you can get a better look at that. And here's the Cadex Vista in 4.3 mode. You can take a look at that for a second. And here is your zoomed in color chart. Now we switch the Vista from 4.3 to 16.9 mode. The camera has not moved at all. Take a look at what's happened to the field of view. I think some of you will find it to be very interesting and may understand why I run in 4.3 mode all the time on my Vistas. And finally here we've got the Nebula Nano. And we'll go ahead and zoom in on that. Last one, which one's better at night? Uh, here we are looking at the Cadex Polar and in the lights of my porch, it looks pretty decent, but let's take it out into the darkness, into the darkness with it and see how it does. Uh, and uh, the Cadex Polar specifically designed with a sensitive, a large sensor, Sensitive sensor is designed to have great low light sensitivity. That's the takeaway. And sure enough, it does appear to have pretty good low light sensitivity. Especially look at the dark areas of the sky and look how much uh, digital noise or color grain, as some people would call it, is not there. It's doing a real good job. Now here's the Runcam Phoenix HD. And again, up on the porch, there's a fair amount of light here. Well, you can see the lights for yourself. Let's uh, take it down into the darkness. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can definitely see it's just not as sensitive. You're just not picking up as much light. And as we get out here into the side yard, you can see a lot of the details, but there is a whole lot more just noise in the image, just like red, green, and blue speckles. And that's because the camera is cranking up the gain on the sensor in order to make the most of the light that it's getting, and that causes a lot of image noise. So uh, definitely looks like the Polar has the edge at the nighttime. So that brings us to the end of the video. And as always, the question, which one should you buy? And I think for this video, the question should actually be, which one can you buy? Because the best is clearly the Cadex Vista. It has a more natural, neutral color. I sure looked to me like it had higher resolution, like it was just resolving details that the other cameras weren't. Uh, it has 120 FPS. And even if you don't care about the latency, you're like, oh, I'm gonna run in 60 FPS high quality mode because that's what I wanna do. It also has adjustable image settings. You, so if you like the sort of more saturated image of the run cam and the Cadex, you could just turn the saturation up in this camera. You could change the exposure. You could change the white balance. You could even flip this camera over in software if you accidentally install it upside down. Cadex Vista is clearly the best, but they don't make it anymore. So the best is really the Nebula Pro, which is also out of stock everywhere. If you really want this camera, the thing to do is to buy a Cadex Air Unit, not this Air Unit light that we used to call a Vista, but the full Cadex Air Unit, it does come with a 120 FPS camera that can do all those things, but that's a lot of money to spend just to get that camera. So, Cadex Vista, it's out of the, it's out of there, can't get it. What next?
<laughs> the Nebula Nano. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, the image quality on this thing is trash. I didn't even show you guys a, fil a flight I took on a cloudier, at a cloudier moment of the day where it just was just this haze all over the image. The only reason to do this is if you absolutely need to save the most weight possible. I'm willing to bet that if you put a nice glass lens on this, it would get better. But out of the box, it's just, nah, no, Nebula Pro Nano, no, don't buy it. So that leaves us with the Cadex Polar and the Runcam Link. And frankly, I think it's almost a toss up. The Cadex Polar image to me looked like it was a little more saturated. The Runcam Link looked a little more muted. There were times when I thought the Polar might have had a little bit more detail resolved, but it could have just been times when there was a little bit more bit rate there. Um, it, I think it's almost a toss up. Price is the same as well. Uh, the Cadex Polar, the Cadex Polar is uh, specifically designed for low light sensitivity and is very good at that. So if you are looking for a low light camera, Cadex Polar is going to be the one that you get. Whichever one you decide to get, though, there are links down in the video description and they are affiliate links. And what that means is that you click that link, you do your shopping, you check out, and I get a small commission of whatever you buy. Uh, you could buy this product, you could buy any product. Just click the store link, do your shopping, check out and it supports the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. That's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.